Elasticity is a favorite term in economics, meaning responsiveness to price. It's why supply and demand schedules are usually sloped, because quantity usually responds to changes in price. Take ice cream cones. The more they cost, the fewer people buy. That's what the slope means. As the price goes up, fewer and fewer ice cream cones are demanded. As it goes down, the quantity demanded increases. So consumers respond to price. They exhibit price elasticity of demand. Supply also slopes in response to price, rising as the price rises. So suppliers, too, show some price elasticity. If they didn't, the supply schedule would be perfectly vertical, the same quantity of ice cream supplied no matter what the price. Similarly, if demand were unresponsive to price or totally price inelastic, the demand schedule, too, would be a vertical line, the same quantity of ice cream cones demanded no matter what the price. Notice, though, that when either schedule slopes and indicates elasticity, the actual angle depends on the scale. The angle's steeper if a $5 price is up here, but if we use a scale that puts $5 lower down, the angle is more horizontal. That's why elasticity is always measured in terms of percentages. Change in quantity over change in price a calculation the textbook explains, and that the Discover Econ software allows you to actually practice. For our purposes, though, the importance of elasticity is how it helps explain the real world. So the rest of this segment is devoted to solving a real-world economic puzzle. Why, in the year 2000, did natural gas prices spike to historically unheard-of levels? The first reason was the weather. It got so cold in my native New England, for instance, that even Frosty bundled up. Meanwhile, California was so hot that air conditioners overloaded the power grid, and in the Northwest, it was so dry that hydropower plants couldn't provide extra power. Okay, so far, so simple. In the winter of 2000-2001, severe weather and less energy from substitute sources increased the demand for gas more demand, the demand curve shifted to the right. So the quantity of gas purchased rose suddenly from its then current level. Now the way we've drawn this graph, it suggests that at equilibrium, price should rise modestly for a modest increase in demand. But in fact, the price spiked to over $8. So what's wrong with this picture? Well, for one thing, it visually misrepresents the price elasticity of demand for natural gas. So let's back up a step. The key question about elasticity is how elastic, that is, how responsive is demand, or for that matter supply, to changes in price? But remember, the answer is measured in percentages. Using percentages, then, let's look at Major League Baseball. In 2003, the average ticket price was about $20, average attendance about 28,000 people per game. What do you guess would happen if the league upped the price to $20.20 a ticket, a 1% price increase? Well, according to current data, ticket sales would drop by about 64 fans per game, a change of just under a quarter of a percent. So quantity changes less than price in this case, resulting in an elasticity coefficient of 0.23. Now, an elasticity coefficient of less than one is the same as saying inelastic. So at current prices, the demand for baseball tickets is price inelastic. If a 1% price rise were to cause exactly a 1% decrease in ticket sales, we'd call the demand for tickets unit elastic, sometimes referred to as an elasticity of one, And finally, if a 1% price increase were to cause more than a 1% dip in quantity demanded, we'd have an elasticity coefficient of more than 1, and demand would be price elastic. So now that you know this, let's see how you do in our big league elasticity quiz. Take a guess at elasticity coefficients for the following items at current prices. Bread, elastic or inelastic? 
actually 0.15, way less than one and thus inelastic. The demand for bread is not very responsive to price. Auto repair, elastic or inelastic? 0.4, still relatively inelastic. Movie tickets, 0.87, almost unit elastic, but not quite. Finally, a restaurant meal, 2.27, quite elastic. Lots of us would stop eating out if current prices rise. Now, elasticity coefficients are given at the current price, that is, at equilibrium. The reason is because of a frustrating fact about elasticity when it's depicted simply by a straight line, as here with the demand curve. On a straight line, elasticity changes as you move up and down. This demand schedule, for instance, is much more elastic at the top than at the bottom. Take price. It's at the top of its range. Thus, any move up here from, say, $10 to $9 is a relatively small change in percentage terms, 10%. However, you can see that this causes a change in quantity demanded from one movie ticket to two. That's a change of 100%. When quantity demanded changes more than price in percentage terms, demand is price elastic. Meanwhile, down here, the opposite occurs. We're in the price range that changes a lot in percentages. It doubles from $1 to $2. Yet the quantity demanded only drops from 10 to 9. So here, in percentage terms, quantity demanded changes less than price and is price inelastic, just because of where we are on the line. But all else equal, a linear demand schedule becomes more inelastic the more vertical its slope. Quantity demanded is less responsive here than it was here. Which may begin to help illustrate our story. Since the demand for natural gas could be unusually inelastic, which it would be easy to depict as unusually vertical. In plain English, consumers would be unusually dependent on this product and therefore they wouldn't cut back much on their demand for natural gas if the current price went up. Consumers would demand this quantity when prices were low and just a little less when prices were higher. In other words, the quantity demanded wouldn't respond much to price. Or in personal terms, I'm not about to lower my gas consumption by turning down my thermostat, say, to 55. Natural gas isn't the only demand curve that's generally price inelastic. People are also generally unresponsive to price when it comes to life-saving medical care. Or addictive substances like tobacco or alcohol, which you don't tend to buy much less of when the price goes up. That is, the more you rely on something for which there are no suitable substitutes, the more unresponsive you are to changes in price. The more inelastic your demand almost anywhere on the schedule. 